We bring you Center Court, Casey Stern, Candace Parker, the Hall of Famer Isaiah Thomas. And let's go to the final sequence because Candace, no disrespect to the three point shooting, and Bede had three in the first half, but it was inside the work he did to get the bucket, and then defensively, what'd you see here? Yeah, right here, Kevin Love getting a great look, a uh, diagram play out of timeout. You can't ask for a better look than that, but I mean, the Sixers down the stretch really doing a good job defensively executing getting stops but again on the other end offensively there's not many people that are going to keep the Sixers from getting a bucket when they need to when they have them beat inside yeah two two well designed plays by you know two good coaches at the end of the game I thought Philadelphia did a good job you know with the high low action dumping it into Embiid and B got a nice you know shot at the rim and then for Cleveland I mean Kevin Love you know he he has a wide open three um courtesy of the shot fake. Nice look there from our new courtside cam. Yeah, just not, some yeah, of the extravaganza on center court. I mean, just a little long on the shot, but I mean, you know, two well-designed, well-executed plays. You know, the thing is, too, is I, and I, I asked Coach about this, and by the way, don't want to disrespect either Long Island, uh, my uh, birthplace, or Tennessee, Tobias Harris 0 for 11 from 3 in this game, and the Sixers survive. But Zeke, Sometimes you see teams have to almost mirror the effort of other teams. And we used to say about Memphis, the grit and grind. Mm -hmm. I know you talked about John B. Line at our pregame. Are we already starting to see the culture that he's presenting of the work and effort that the Cavaliers were putting out? Because it seemed like, tell me if I'm wrong, Philly was having an up theirs as the game went along. A absolutely. And what you're seeing is, uh, you know, similar to what he did at Michigan, what he did at, at, at West Virginia. Uh, they, they play a, a very methodical style, uh, and they don't take bad shots. They take good shots. Even though they use analytics, they don't depend on analytics. I think they come to the game saying, okay, we got a mismatch with Kevin Love down low. We're going to put it in the post, or we're going to put it in the post of Tristan Thompson. We're not going to take hurried rush shots. We're going to make you defend pick and roll. We're going to make you defend post. We're going to make you f defend back screen, flare screen. So... I love the way this Cleveland team is coming together offensively. But more importantly, Candice, I like the patience that they're playing with on the offensive side of the ball, particularly out on the road. And that was a nicely run play, obviously, for Kevin Love, who would say, I'm sure, he and Tristan both great again tonight, had a good look. But I want to go to the possession before that because, uh, to me, there's, there's greatness about in coaching when everybody knows – X guy's getting the ball, right? And you get it to him anyway because you find a way. They misdirect. They use a little youth defensively as Sexton gets mixed up and, and Embiid really wide open from the Harris feed to get the biggest part of the game in the bucket. Well, I thought it was interesting that at the end of the game right here, they bring, you know, Embiid into this, obviously, down, down low. I mean, he gets this possession here where – it the was defense, great defense, Thompson. Tristan Thompson. But on the next possession where they get the high-low, they brought Tobias Harris high and not Ben Simmons. Yeah. And that has been, I will say, a problem that I will say with Philly is that in the playoffs, your best player, you have to have them play off the ball. Yeah. Because Ben Simmons doesn't knock down free throws very well, and he's not a reliable shooter from the outside. So I think – in years past, they've had Jimmy Butler. Mm -hmm. That can be that guy that they throw the ball to and he goes and gets a bucket. Well, now, with everybody knowing that Embiid's going to get the ball in the paint, they're going to make it harder for him. They're not going to allow him to beat you. So in the playoffs, do you have to go to a guy like Tobias Harris to finish games and to make plays for you? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's going to be, you know, one of the things as Philly continues to go down this path. I mean, can, can Simmons be on the floor – at the end of the game, if he doesn't have the ball. What we saw, what we both recognized tonight was a defensive mistake by Cleveland uh, where they didn't help enough off the weak side and Embiid was able to catch it and lay it in. Simmons was on the, on the weak side and that defender could have slid down, but he didn't. I think when we get to the playoffs, there will be enough attention paid to detail where that weak side defender will slide in. And Simmons will have to make a play either from the perimeter or putting it on the floor. But that's definitely something to watch and look for. And I think just to add to that quickly, Zeke, Horford, who we didn't see tonight, 
You go to those years in Boston, we saw it even last year in the playoffs. So great when he's at the top, yeah. almost directing traffic, enabling shots and passing and flow. Well, if he's doing that, to your point, expounding on it, then where's Ben Simmons? Because now he doesn't have the ball in that spot either, and Horford is so good at that offensively. And early on, uh, Steve Smith and I went to the game where Philly played Atlanta, and you could see the confusion with Al Horford and Tobias Harris yeah. when Embiid's on the floor because it seems like, you know, Tobias likes that left block. Embiid likes that left block. Mm. Simmons likes that left block. There are a lot of guys that love the same spot. Al Horford, the same thing. So figuring out offensively, especially in the playoffs when you're scouted, yeah. where the ball needs to go and how to get those two involved because Tobias has to be that third scorer yeah. for them to be able to be successful. And, and I think, you know, come playoff time, and I've said this before, Simmons got to become a better foul shooter. You know, at, at the end of the game, in the last two minutes of the game, uh, your point guard, he's got to be able to, to do a couple of things. He's got to be able to distribute the basketball. He's got to be able to also knock down foul shots. And if he's open, make a shot. But where you really finish off the game when you got a lead, you finish it at the foul line because teams are going to be fouling. They're going to make mistakes. So majority of your points are going to come from the foul line to keep that team at bay. But if you're a poor foul shooter, then that coach is going to have to take you out. And then how does that coach massage the ego that you have as being one of the best players sitting on the bench at crunch time? Well, the question is, uh, in crunch time on social media, do we have massaging of egos by family members, apparently? <laughs> The highlight of watching NBA TV is seeing the ever so fantastic Candace Sparker on commentary. Uh, happy Sparksmas, not a relative. Not a Sparks fan at all. Not a relative. Happy oh, Sparksmas. No, uh, no. By the way, staying in LA, Candace uh, said the Clippers uh, will win the West. We'll come this back to we're that doing, other, that Casey. team. The Shots Lakers. fired. That's what we're doing. Uh, will they treat Phoenix like their son, or will the Suns continue to surprise? We will take a look live when we come back. Second game in our back-to-back, -back. the Portland Trailblazers have gotten a lot of work from Dame, and then it's been kind of where does the scoring, whether it be Rodney Hood or CJ or others, Whiteside, we'll see that group against the Kings, and that exciting upstart group last season was a big story as we went through the first half of the year. This season, it's been the Phoenix Suns. They are playing the Lakers and hosting. Zeke, how much do you love learning as a coach or as a player, the medal of your group, when you feel like you're taking that next step and then you get tested against a team like L.A.? I mean, that, that's the best part of coaching. You, you always are measuring. You're always trying to figure out psychologically where your team is at. And you're always trying to figure out in terms of their, their preparation, in terms of if, can, if they can finish and execute the schemes that you're trying to develop. And it's a, it's a year-long thing. It, it's not just a, a one-week thing. It's a year-long thing where you're constantly trying to make your team better and the players are trying to get better. We take a look live uh, now in action in the second quarter. Suns up by two. Candace, uh, Devin Booker, we all knew, was great. Speaking of Dame scored 60, we saw Devin what put up 70 in a, in a losing effort. How impressed have you been with the group around him to make the Suns start what it's been? Well, to me, Devin Booker has always been that scorer. He's been one of the most elite scorers in this league probably for the last two or three, two or three seasons. But he was having to do way too much. I mean, they had him playing point guard last season. Mm -hmm. And his entire career with Phoenix, has he really had a great point guard? And so I loved bringing Ricky Rubio in his prime, having experience, having playoff experience, playing winning basketball. Because Phoenix, for a long time, Devin has put up 70 but in an L. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and so I want to see him be able to put up numbers in meaningful games. And now Ricky Rubio, that in terms of Ubre, are allowing him to play his game and they're winning doing it. You know, the other thing is you see Bridges on the floor. Their younger players are smart. Obviously, all the Nova guys seem to be. But, Zeke, the guy we just saw at the line, you know, I've been hitting you on this the last couple of weeks because I think it is a big factor. They show the numbers there. Baines is averaging 16 a game. Now, you may not expect that all year, but the toughness, all the things he added to Boston and now is kind of taken away, sometimes not the big name, right, but the right fit. He's been that as a pickup. Management deserves a lot of credit for that. De definitely the right fit. Management definitely deserves a lot of credit. 
and Boston definitely misses him. I mean, he, he's a guy that does all the little things and, and his physical presence and his understanding out on the floor of how to use his body and how to, you know, make his body, you know, effective out on the floor. It's not all about his jumping ability, but he carves up space. Big guys, the, they have to be space eaters. And how do you become a space eater? You, you got to use your elbows. And, and you look at Bain, and he's got his elbows out all the time, and he takes up that interior space, which consequently makes it difficult. There are many guys you could say now, uh, Candace, could have played in the 90s, where like X-Man and Oak and those dudes would be in there, but Baines could have bumped with those dudes, been fine. I mean, Baines was a huge player, like you said, for the Celtics. And he's played winning basketball, and that's what Phoenix needs. They need that. That type of basketball to be brought in. I mean, Monty Williams has done a phenomenal job, and yeah. a lot of people scratch their head about some of the offseason moves that the Suns made. But my biggest question is, how do you bring Aiden back? In what way? When Bain's playing yeah. so well, yeah. and Aiden is going to come back, and obviously defensively Phoenix is playing well. Yeah. Aiden struggled on a defensive end last year. It's going to be interesting how they kind of bring him back and incorporate him on the offense, but also, you know, kind of bringing him up to speed with defensively. As the night goes along, we'll talk more about this game. I want to ask you guys about Kuzma, who has got 13 early, but been talk about is he maybe taken away from his own offense? How should his minutes be? These are good questions to have, by the way, for the Lakers, who have been pretty good on their winning streak. Speaking of good, we got more to come as we get ready for game number two of our doubleheader, the Trailblazers and Damian Lillard against the Kings. We're coming back here on Center Court. After this on NBA TV, don't move.